yeah, Craig's got a lot to, to blame for. So I've I just thought. hit record, so anybody else admitting to giving other people clap. <laughs> Sorry, mate. That's right. I'm getting lights. So yeah, Craig's got a lot to uh, answer for. Uh, become good mates out of it too, so which is always a plus. But yeah, this is my third year this year. Uh, Lighter Armour was 48 channels last year. This year I'm looking to go to Light Show Pro and 510 channels. So. Okay. Um, I'm Aussie Phil. Um, anyone who doesn't know me probably uh, hasn't been around the forums very long. Um, I think Dave's got a couple of years on me in terms of animated lighting. Um, I kicked off around uh, 2006, somewhere in there. Um, started with some stuff from RJ uh, from DLA and his freestyle gear for controlling AC lights. Um, so I put AC lights up. I'd, I'd been doing Christmas lights for Yonks before that as static stuff, but first one was, yeah, put some 24 volt AC lights out there and some 240 volt stuff, put it up. Went for a drive out to um, our Gungahlin area in Canberra, which is famous for having lots of houses and streets and all streets all looked up. And I went, looked at all these lights and went, there's got to be a better way. These are all unsynchronised. And I went searching on the forums and found Planet Christmas first. Looked at Lightorama and went, wow, that's just too expensive. Because already in my head I'd planned out about 200 channels and I hadn't even started. I looked at Lighter Rama and went, 200 channels is going to cost me an absolute fortune. Got to be a cheaper way. I found DIYC, uh, found RJ stuff, uh, eventually went over to his forum and went with um, uh, DMX. So I got into the whole DMX world. Um, and from there I looked at the next year and went, don't like AC, DC is the future. We're in Australia. We've got to do DC. And uh, we moved over to DC, uh, did my own controllers. And from there, uh, out of that, we decided I'm tired of um, the US-centric nature of the information. It's all centred around 110 volts and they just talk all this AC stuff. We need something for Australia. And that's where the forum come from, uh, essentially out of that. And here we are. number of years on, we've grown. RGB pixels are, yeah, the future. And channel counts of... 15 to 20,000 is still unusual, but it's going to become more of a norm. Um, I think I'm aiming at 20,000 channels this year. Dave's looking at 15, 16. Um, Eric up in the NT, I think he's talking 30,000 plus channels if he gets up and running. Yeah. He bought 8,000 pixels last year for his mega tree and only got to put 4,000 of them up. <laughs> He still has 4,000 sitting in his, <laughs> in his house, unused. So what I'm going to try and do, um, it's great to see new people. It's, it's wonderful. But one of the biggest things um, that gets asked is, what software are we going to use? So over the space of the next couple of hours, any, anyone who's uh, already watched this streaming uh, at least gets to see it in person. I've done this presentation up in Brisbane, done it down in Adelaide. Um, We'll try and um, we'll try and fine tune. I guess if you've got a question as I go through, please stick your hand up and say, "Hey, I got a question. I don't understand that, or I'm going too fast." Especially if you're new, because being around it for so long, I tend to often just be, you know, bang, 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 and, and skip through it. And I don't mean to be. So if it looks and sounds confusing, please ask. Um, I don't know everything. Dave was, I was waiting for Dave to comment and go, yes, you do. <laughs> so, yeah, right. Now, hopefully, I was going to say, hopefully this is going to work. So, all about software options. And just why would you, as a person there, choose the type of software that's going to run your display? So, we'll go through what some of the common, op common options are. Five years ago, there was Vixen or there's an LLR. There wasn't any other choice. You either paid lots of money and run LLR hardware, or you use Vixen. The choice was simple. Uh, it just wasn't any cost. So, eventually I'll work out which keys are which here. So, what we've got is various traditional sequences. What do I mean by a traditional sequencer? Well, I just mentioned two of them, LLR 
and uh, Vixen. So Vixen 2.1 or 2.5 and both versions are out there. A lot of people will tell you 2.1 is the last stable release of Vixen. Quite a few of us have used 2.5 and used it successfully for any number of years. I'm, I've ran it for three complete years now uh, and it's very, very good. More uh, S2 or LOR S3. S3 is the current release um, and you, know, you pay for it but the upgrade pricing looks quite reasonable and uh, there's certainly validity behind that. And Lightshow Pro 2X. I say 2X because we've got 2.5 on the horizon. Why are they traditional sequencers? Who hasn't fired up or seen a sequencer? Okay. Most of the traditional sequencers look like a big spreadsheet. Okay, you fire them up, they've got time running that way and they've got channels going this way and you fill in cells. Okay, you say I want this cell to be on or off or ramped up or ramped down and they're just, that's why we call them traditional. They all look and feel basically the same. And the new kid on the block, HLS. Um, I know it's not holiday light sequencer, but no one's actually given me the correct um, expansion of that. No one around the forums is HLS. Then of course, we move into non-traditional sequences. These are ones that don't necessarily have a grid. Okay. Our options here, Vixen 3. Anyone who's seen Vixen 3 will say, well, hang on a minute, it's got time and it's got channels. It really doesn't have channels. It's got groups. You don't work at a channel level in Vixen 3. So it's not quite traditional anymore. It's moved into a, and I'll get into this when I look at Vixen 3, it's moved into an object orientated space for programming lights. Light Factory Personal, um, software that's come out of the pro lighting industry. It's completely different. It's certainly non-traditional. Charmsys Magic Q, another one that's out of the um, uh, pro lighting space. I've heard this of this being used by guys over in the US to do light shows. And then of course, there's other software that you might want to use with your display. And we will go into these in, in more depth. This is why this one's quite so long. Pixel Toy. Pixel Toy consumed four or five good hours down in Canberra in March when we had the guys down there for a, a get together. Um, magic piece of software, but we can't use it to actually run sequenced lights. But we can use it for a lot of other things that we could potentially use and capture um, stuff that we can then use within a sequencer. Nutcracker. Uh, around the forums, Nutcracker, um, it's a way to um, generate lighting effects for your mega trees, primarily, and matrix stuff. Um, Sean, uh, the developer for this, is also now looking at, uh, good morning whoever just wandered in. John, welcome. Have a seat, mate. This is John from Bateman's Bay. Have I got that right, didn't I? Yep. Okay. Um, so, Nutcracker. Um, Sean's also taking the next step um, that he's going to look at it, making it a more of a product that you can actually sequence effects into and then move into your you know, other sequences. Matrix. Matrix is commercial, uh, high-end software. Good morning, sir. Edwin, Edwin welcome. All right, Matrix, um, very high-end. Um, you want to control 500 odd channels? It's going to cost you, I don't know, who's one thousand euro. euro. You want to control unlimited universes? It's Five, five or six thousand euro. It's not something that we, probably sitting around this room, can afford. Unless someone's a lottery winner that they haven't told me. If so, please put your hand up and give me money. No? Okay. All right. But it has been used out there and used very, very successfully. Anyone who has seen the um, 
Andrew uh, MPH is a regional uh, RGB mega tree from New Zealand on, on video. That thing was all, all the effects on that were from Madrix. Okay. Now he did use Vixen as the sequencer to drive Madrix, but Madrix was actually running the tree. Superstar, that's the add-in for LLR to do RGB um, ribbons and other effects, have I got that right, LLR users? And of course, X-Lights. Now, X-Lights is a playback engine. If you've got uh, a um, Light Show Pro sequence or you've got a LLR sequence, uh, and a number, I think even Vixen sequences, you can drop those out and play them back using X-Lights. Okay? And X-Lights apparently is very, very efficient. Guys that were having trouble playing sequences last year in LSP actually used X-Lights to play back their shows. Um, and Light Jams. Now, Light Jams is another one that's um, you know, a real-time effects type um, product. Again, not really a sequencer. It's, it's nearly a, you know, it's a cross between Pixel Toy and Madrix, and it's used by um, DJs and stuff like that in nightclubs to do real-time lighting effects on large LED matrix displays. What do you think our mega trees, RGB mega trees, et cetera, are? Just big RGB matrix displays. So, Let's dive a little bit deeper into some of these products. Now, Vixen 2X. Okay, now this is straight from the Vixen website. No, no commentary from me uh, in terms or no um, editorial. Um, you can make up programs in it. It's got daily timers. The timer on it is, is quite effective. It works. Just don't try and run two sequences at once or cross-fade them. Okay. Uh, if you're using DMX anyway. Um, chase sequences are, are quick and easy. Um, data can be exported and imported to and from any sequence or program. That's from Vixen to Vixen. Uh, audio visualizers. Um, you can make libraries of effects within Vixen. Um, works really well. Just don't make them on thousands of channels. They get a bit slow to load. Um, and you can change the output or order of um, channels. Interestingly, uh, I demoed that down in uh, Adelaide and uh, Smart Alec looked at me and went, well, I've learned something about Vixen. And he's used Vixen for years. <laughs> so, what do I think about Vixen? It is grid based. Okay, so it's straightforward. You open it up, there's the grid. I want that channel there, or that light to turn on. I click that cell and say it's on. You can't get much simpler than that. It's free. It's not going to cost you anything. You've just spent five grand on five grand on lights and controllers and all sorts of other stuff. Vixen will let you get started for nothing with software. Okay. It is relatively simple. First time I ever used Vixen, I opened it up and went, "What do I do here?" Then I started clicking in some cells and went, "Oh, okay." And it's a Windows program. I mean, who's a who's not a Windows user? I know there's probably some Mac users in the room, but you know, you've used you've used Windows, that you know, and and Mac users are quite Mac users are quite you know, get into this world now. You right you, yeah, but you right click and you get menus, okay. I thought, oh, it's a Windows program. I'll right click. I got a menu and it said, oh, turn the cell on, ramp it up. All of a sudden, it become easy to use. So, Vixen is relatively simple. Um. It can play back very, very large channel counts. Um, I fired up a 20,000 channel sequence the other day, uh, a couple of days ago, and it actually played it back without any problem. So it can play it back. Sequencing 20,000 channels in Vixen, you're never going to do it. You can't sequence that many channels in a grid-based sequencer. Okay? It just becomes too difficult and too hard. But if you've got um, Vixen, in my personal opinion, if you've got somewhere between zero and 500 channels, it's extremely usable. Yeah. Um, it has poor support for RGB. I'm probably being generous. Okay. But because you can reorder your channels, uh, it does have a couple of RGB plugins. It does have some support in there. So if you're getting into some basic RGB stuff. If you've got you know, a whole range of normal Christmas lights and you want to put in a couple of you know, 
pretty coloured tubes and some RGB strip along your eaves, Vixen will do the job and do it very well. Um, my first year I put out 50, um, 50, 100 what I call garden flowers, they're RGB garden flowers, they go right across my front yard. Okay, and there's 50, 50 um, RGB channels involved. That was all done in Vixen, it was all done just by reordering the channels and making them, here's all my red ones, I want to make this lot red. Okay, so it can do it. It is memory hungry for lots of channels. What do I mean by that? My display for the last two years has been around about 8,000 channels in Vixen. Um, and if I loaded up a 30 minutes of sequences for a show, I could watch the memory consumption go to 12 gig to 16 gig of memory usage. Memory's cheap, but it's still not necessarily an expense you might want to use. Once again, if you're using 500 channels, who cares? It's going to run in a gig of RAM and it's going to run on old P2. Okay, so Vixen is, is good there. It's just these considerations as we move forward into what is going to be some of the direction in the future. Okay, so for people who haven't seen it, sneak peek at um, Vixen 2.5. With a bit of luck, all this is actually going to work as I expect. I can be a little bit lucky if I'm lucky. But if I remember how to drive my laptop, Now, the other Vixen and Vixen 2.5, um, both um, you can essentially, they come, they're downloaded as zip files. You can unzip them into a folder and they'll literally run from anywhere. Now, Vixen 2.5 will write data directories to your program, uh, your, your um, documents folder, uh, but the, the XE you can just unzip and run it. And you move it around and copy it. Um, all I did was copy this from my show computer onto my laptop, didn't do anything special, didn't install it. And, hey Eddie, I'm going to plug in, mate. I don't know whether it's going to work, but. Hey Craig, I'm a little bit short on cable here, mate. just can't get good help around the room, can you? <laughs> yeah, I'm right now. All right. Okay. I'm going to keep going while these guys um, work this one out. <laughs> okay. So, when I said Vixen starts up, I mean, um, this is um, the screen you get. Looks a little bit, oh, what do I do? Okay. So, to actually start a new sequence, uh, I'm just going to do um, a Vixen standard sequence. Most people, you know, when they're doing displays, will be just Vixen standard sequences. Um, you can set up uh, each event period, and that's when I talked about cells within Vixen. The event period is the length and time of each cell. Okay, 100 milliseconds is uh, quite normal for LOR users. They're used to it, tenth of a second. Um, 50 milliseconds is the often quoted use for uh, people over the number of years from DIYC because of the Renard influence um, and the DMX guys tended to use 25 milliseconds because it more closely matched the DMX timing. So I tend to use and you know I normally default to 25 milliseconds so I'm not sure why it's sitting at 100 although it was a clean install. Um, I talked about we can set up profiles. Um, there's my profile for the Brisbane Mini. I'm just going to select that um, this is a quick way to actually have a default set of channels set up, outputs, etc. Um, let's assign some audio. Bit of luck. Okay, automatically sets the uh, length of the sequence at that point to the to the audio track. Um, you can then work your way through and listen to it, and set some uh, beat markers by using your uh, control and number keys. Uh, I'm not going to do that at the moment. Uh, I'm just going to create it. And 2.5, uh, if you do this in 2.1, it won't ask you to save it first. And quite interestingly, when I first used it, I created, first sequence I ever created, 
I didn't save it. Exited Vixen and said, do you want to save your sequence? I didn't even think about it. I went, no, let's go. And of course I lost it. Whoops. So Vixen 2.5 actually says, do you want to save them? So sequence saved. And with a bit of luck, um, we've got a sequence here. Um, let's just expand that out. Make it a bit there. You can see here it's got uh, 2,400 channels in it all the way down there. Uh, it's a few minutes long. So two minutes and whatever it is long across there. And in terms of just using it, if I want to make those channels out, just highlight those cells, right click, so I want to ramp them on. So basically what I've done there in, in that second of time period, I've ramped those channels on. Okay. Um, the other thing I didn't, didn't mention, the visualizer in Vixen, um, I would say, is not good. Uh, I've personally never used it. Um, I think it's valid for smaller channel counts uh, because you've got to go in and draw every single light as a single pixel. It does take some time to set up. I've never had a display that small that I've actually bothered to take the time to actually set it up. So if you are using Vixen, in many ways you've got to visualise what your display is going to do based on the information you're saying. So those channels there I'm saying are turned on. Those ones there I'm going to, you know, ramp off. Okay. Now in terms of, we talked about chasers being easy to create. Just, yep. Yep. Okay. All right. Visualizer. Good question. Visualizer is... Um, the ability for you to actually, on your screen, draw what your lights are going to draw. Draw a, draw a window basically that says, "This light, uh, this channel is this light," and just create, preferably in the layout of your house. Most of the visualizers allow you to actually put a picture in there, um, and you position lights across your house and strings across your house. And when you play back the sequence, it allows you to then see what those lights are doing in relationship to how they're laid out across your house. Does it make sense? Okay. So that's the that's the purpose behind visualizers. Um, so we talked about um, things like ramps. Um, you can, um, let's just, um, chases for a second, I'll just ramp that on. I'll, not ramp on, not ramped off. Ramp off, you know, pick, pick the right one. Let's do it again. Ramp on. Ramp off. Uh, yes, you can. Um, I'll see if I can find uh, one of my older show sequences. Um, let's just quickly there. Uh, I just double click the channel name. I can say that's my red channel. There you go. Okay. Um, I have a I have a sequence I have um, my 8,000 channel sequence set up with everything coloured and named. Uh, it's all done in a spreadsheet externally and then imported into Vixen. Okay, um, and you can actually up here with channel order, um, you can define new orders, etc. I haven't done it for this particular file, but I'll, I'll crack one of the other ones open in a minute. Um, so if I just copy that, um, if I copy that um, under haven't used Vixen a little bit for a while, so pardon me. If, um, so paint from clipboard. So I've copied that little um, ramp on, ramp off to the clipboard. If I shift key, no, control key. I always get it wrong, even after all these years. And you see there I've got a, a line on my screen. I'm just holding the control key and dragging my mouse. Uh, there I've set in a chase across the channels using that ramp. Okay, so whatever you copy to your clipboard can be turned into a chase across the channels. Um, you can, of course, zoom. Um, zoom your columns in smaller so you can see more of your timeline. You can zoom your rows so you can, yeah, that's a bit hard to, a bit hard to actually read anything, but if you want to make a chase that's across, a sometimes control and click and so you want to chase across a lot of channels. Sometimes it's quite easy just to zoom it out. You don't have to read it. You just got to have a rough idea where you want to go first, um, and then you can zoom zoom your uh, rows back out again 
so you can actually see what's going on. Okay, so that's a quick way to set that up. Now I have absolutely no idea if I press play, uh, nothing actually happens. So I don't know whether Eddie's got me plugged in down there or not, or whether I'm even vaguely set up. But um, I'm hoping at some point that I'm plugged in. All right. I haven't I haven't configured the IP address on my network card. I was sort of hoping it was multicast and it was all just going to work, Eddie. Um, so. <laughs> I'll take a little detour here in a second and show people how to configure um, network cards. Um, so that's Vixen. Um, in a very, very, and I'm, this is going to be very brief because if people want to uh, get in depth with this, um, there's plenty of experts in this software around the room. Come and have a chat to us during the afternoon and we can go further in depth into these products. Okay, um, Dave, myself uh, are definitely Vixen experts. Um, other Dave as well. Um, Light Show Pro, Dave, a few of few of the guys around the room. Um, so we can these people can do deep dives into this product during the af these products during the afternoon to get more information. So basic overview of Vixen. It that's that's basically the UI. It is relatively easy to use, and um, as you can see. You've got a small number of channels, going to be very useful. You've got a large number of channels. It's hard to actually navigate around and understand and vi try and visualise what's happening in your show. Let me just um, see if I've got... Yeah, we'll save it. I tend to save sequences like they're going out of style. Uh, let's see, That's I think that's one of... No, that's not one of my old ones. Um, I may not have one on this PC, with this PC. Uh, if I don't, apologise. Um, no, I must have had this on my show. I, on the other minis, I took my show PC away, and I had the the show sequences from last year on there, so I can't show it. Uh, but yeah, you can you can sort and um, reorder the channels, um, and that's that can lead to a lot of efficiencies. So. show them later yep yep so that was 2.5 any questions before we just duck into Lightarama okay Lightarama or S3 once again straight from their website okay these are things they say the product does Okay, audio. Vi I would hope that all these products can do audio and visual synchronization. Okay, audio waveform displays, sequence in sequence, so you can actually use sequences inside other sequences. That's something that's now different to Vixen. Transparent DMX support. Well, LOR never had DMX support, so the fact they're now trumping it is, is a big thing in its own right. But you've got to have LOR S3 advanced. Advanced? Yeah, advanced background and foreground effects so you can actually overlay effects okay and that's different to Vixen Vixen doesn't o well Vixen can overlay effects but not in the same fashion just as long just as long as you don't shoot up my nose Dave like I tried to do an Adelaide <laughs> okay um, so you want to um, have um, and I'll, I'll talk mega trees because people can usually vi visualize a everyone knows what a mega tree is Okay, we can visualize. So, you, um, if we have an RGB mega tree, you might turn the entire tree red, and then overlay overlay a ramp on it. So it might ramp down from green and things like that. So you can actually overlay the various effects on the outputs. That's a simple, simplified, simplified, <laughs> simplified. Thank you. Explanation. Ben, does that sound about right? Yeah. Thank you. I'm not. I'm not an LLR user. I've installed it to actually see what the interface likes is like for the demos, and I sort of am relying on various people to say, "Yeah, that's right. That's wrong." So, floating tool pallets. Um, yeah, the ability to drop your tools over on another monitor. Uh, good idea. Undo and redo all sequences. Yeah, uh, just about every obeys undo and redo. And of course, they have a big blurb about their, sh their show editors, show sequences, show builder files. 
um, the ability to interface with pressure mats and beat wizards and um, the ability to actually integrate with Holiday Lights Designer was a big one in over in the US, but I don't know anybody who uses Holiday Light Designer in Australia. Um, so it was a big thing in the US. And I love the fact they say, you know, commercial shows with over 3,000 channels have been sequenced and run successfully. Yeah, they should come over here and talk to some of the real guys. <laughs> so, this is... Um, it is grid based again, okay? When I first looked at it and had a demo to me, I went, that's Vixen on steroids, okay? Believe it or not, they both have a very common ancestry. They both stemmed out of the same, uh, I can't think of the name of the product now, pre-Vixen. Yeah, um, it's got another, it's got another Dasher, Dasher. They both stemmed out of that Dasher heritage. And believe it or not, Light Show Pro stemmed out of exactly the same heritage. So all these products are actually coming from a same base idea and same base um, ancestry. It does have a good visualizer. Um, I've seen it in use. Uh, it is actually very good and it's very, very effective. Uh, it's straightforward, once again. As I said, like Vixen. Uh, you go in there and it's, it seems to be quite easy to use. It's stable. Um, the guys, the programs behind this have spent a lot of time to make it stable. It just sits and it runs and it runs and it runs and it runs. Um, the forums do talk about other issues that they have, but its stability is, there's no particular issue with its stability. Um, hard to use with high channel counts. It's never been a product that's really been designed with very high channel counts involved. In fact, you know, they, talk, they talk about 3,000 channels as being huge shows. Um, so, like Vixen, it is hard to use with these high channel counts. But I think S3 does incorporate some level of grouping, so it does make it a little bit easier. Um, the hard, the sequence-based hardware configuration, the hardware configuration for your products, you know, what outputs is it going out to and, and how, how is it set up? Is it going out DMX, is it going out LOR, is it, is it using a dongle to get out? That's all contained in each sequence, okay? If you change the number of lights you've got out there after you started sequencing, you've got to go back and do each sequence, okay, um, by hand. Now that, that, that actually shows to me why LOR people um, you're here in the States they define their show setups and they define the number of lights, etc. they're using. They've defined that back in February and March. They know exactly what their light show is going to be. So they don't have to go back and change their files when they've been programming an LOR. I personally don't work that way. I, I've got no idea what my channel, channel range and selection is going to be until sometime in you know, October and November. So <laughs> there's no way I could actually work in that fashion. Um, and of course its RGB support is not great, uh, but it does have a level of better support these days than Vixen does, most certainly. So, a sneak peek of War S3. Um, I know we've got a couple of LOR users in the room, so what I might do is... Um, now, when LOR installs, you know, I showed Vixen and it was really simple. It had one program, you ran it. When Light Arama installs, um, there's all the programs it wants to install. Okay, it's got hardware configuration utilities. It's got show sequences. It's got show builders. It's uh, it's got lots of things, but it has good documentation. All these are explained. Um, you can go read about them. You know, you work out what they do. Uh, I want the sequence editor. Okay. Yep, I've only got a demo license on. Um, the demo licenses will uh, do have some limitations. You can't output, um, and as you can read there, uh, it will not control your light. So you can go and play with it and work out how it uses it. And you can play with it and have a look at it. Uh, yep, we'll just come bring that up. So uh, new musical, s new musical sequence. Um, okay, so this one is actually asking for a file name up front. And I s 
Oh, it's asking for my audio. Duh. All right. I'm going to cheat with a bit of luck. Vixen audio. Pick up the same audio track. Hopefully it don't yet. It's going to work with the MP3. Let you set up. Uh, you can tap, get your initial timing. Remember in, when we looked at Vixen, we could do our initial timing as we created the sequence. Well, here you've got some extra effects. Tap a wizard, beat wizard for you wizard. So you've got some extra abilities. Um, set up your timings, tenth of a second, half second, one second. And you see there where it's, it's talked about this. Uh, don't care about me being the author. And no, I don't want to actually play the entire song. So but you can see there where you can set up. And this is, this is to me where LOR has improved on the whole Vixen experience. If you're new to the new to the scene, and you've got no idea what you're doing, this is guiding you step by step through the through the through all the options. Okay, it's saying do this, do that, do this bit, do that bit, and it's making it easier for you. Now, look, look, LOR now with its ability to actually do uh, DMX native is no longer limited to LOR hardware. We can, we, I, can, I can go and buy LR now and use it to control all my DMX hardware. Right, so don't think of it as a hardware software combination anymore. Think of it as just a, another software product. Um, but uh, that's, that's obviously a channel out there. I can set my colors. And how similar is this to Vixen? I clicked on its name. I got a dialog box to be able to change its color. Okay. Um, one of, the, one of the big differences um, in this straight away, as you see down here, we've got various other you know, tools and clipboards, etc. Uh, I've got no timing marks in this one. Um, I should have set some timing marks on my way. And can I set timing marks after the fact? How? Uh, tools. That's a bit of a worry. Tools and beat wizard. All right. Um, let's not let's not do that. Let's just let's just cheat. File new. Give me a. I'll, I'll just do an animation sequence. So we've seen how the audio attached. Uh, tenth of a second. Uh, default marks there. Bang. Once going, we have a grid again. Okay. Um, now the big difference between LR and Vixen. L uh, Vixen, I, I clicked and highlighted a bunch of cells. Um, in um, in Lightorama, you actually select the effect first and then select your cells. So, a bit of a reverse order of how you actually do it. But the concept's all the same. Okay, I want to do some ramp ups. There we go. Uh, I want to, and you don't have to reselect. Uh, that's one thing I did like about it. You know, you can just keep dragging and dropping and drawing. Okay, so, so once again, it's, it's eased the use of using the product. Okay, so. What a rama. It's going to cost a few more dollars. Okay. Um, price on it? Advanced version? Yeah. So it, it's not free. It's going to cost some dollars. But it does introduce some more ease of use features, more functionality. Um, and there's some, uh, one, of the, one of the nice things, I guess, about if you're going to use Light Rama. There's a huge user base across the world. There's a whole range of people. You, you've got a 32 channel show, and you can stick it up and say, I'm using such and such a song and with 32 channels. Someone got a sequence they can share with me. And more than likely, someone's going to have one. Okay, especially if it's a more traditional sequence. You want, you want wizards in winter, winter in 64 channels. I'll bet someone out there's got one. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you can actually get us so you, at your time poor you can probably get sequences that are ready to rock and roll and run. Yeah, you can buy them on eBay? Well, there you go. All right. So, as I said, very, very basic look at, look at Lightorama. But you can see how the concepts are the same. You can see how it's really a traditional sequence. It's grid. It's got all these effects in it. But, I mean, it's got a lot more capability. Both of these products have got more capability than I'm showing off here. So, questions?
Yep. Yep. You you pay you pay for the you know you pay for the superstar add-on. Yeah, which is X dollars, and I don't believe it's particularly cheap either. Yeah. So. Okay, it's gone down. So there is a trap with going with LR if you if you're heading off into the pixel world. So not necessarily the, a software product you might want to choose. So I'm going to keep a very close eye on the time and let people have a cuppa soon. Um, the first person who nods off is usually my my cue to um, actually be quiet and um, actually get everyone um, up for a cup of coffee. What I usually do first though is walk around and slap them around the head uh, to wake them up. So just be watching out for that. Um, look, Lacho Pro, first on the scene three years ago now. Yes, it's been three, it's been three years with version point something. Okay. Uh, I bought the original version. I, you know, I, I only not long download, deleted the download for it uh, in the last 12 months. Uh, and it's gone through a few iterations since then. Current released product is version 2.0. Uh, Dave and Eddie, Lithgow Lights here, are both currently testing and playing with the beta of 2.5. I think you've got it here to have a look at later for anyone who's interested. Um, so let's have a quick look at what Lacho Pro says on their website. When it was released, it was definitely the next generation of show software. No ifs or buts about it. Yep, um, it has powered some of the dis best displays in the community. There's no doubt, no ifs or buts about that. Yep, if you're looking at traditional sequences, that's it. It is the choice. There is no other choice in terms of a traditional sequence if you want to get into RGB. Okay. I read that on their website and I chuckled. I don't think I've seen a quarter of a release ever. <laughs> Might be a bit unfair, but um, what I will say about um, David and Lacho Pro, he, um, as the year goes on, he gets very responsive and will keep uh, bringing out uh, patches and fixes. But at the beginning of the year, he tends to like to take a bit of a break and I personally don't blame him, you, you know, you need to get away from it all. But it does tend to feel sometimes like there's nothing happening in the Light Show Pro world. So I really wish he wouldn't put that on his website. Unless he's going to stick to it. So, Light Show Pro 2.x. Timeline versus channels and groups. Light Show Pro starts to look at being grouping your channels into, you know, here's a mini, here's a mini tree consisting of you know, eight channels. Here's a mega tree that's got a thousand channels, right? And it'll have all the all the channels underneath it. But you can group them up and that work on that thing as a group. Here's an arch with you know, 50 pixels in it. That's a group of channels. So whilst it still has a traditional timeline and you know potentially channels down this way, and you can work with it as discrete channels. You can group them up into layers and groups of, of channels. Okay, so it's starting to transcend the grid. And when it first came out, I mean, Eddie and I spent quite a bit of time saying, and uh, I was uh, I was in the second round of beaters, um, quite a bit of time saying, you, if you're using Vixen and Law, you need to forget the traditional way you sequenced. You need to forget the grid. But in many ways, the grid has snuck back in. It hasn't changed, the, the UI hasn't changed, but the concept of the grid snuck back in a little bit. The Light Show Pro. Layers, groups, audio scrubbing, time markers, these are all great features. I love the ability to scrub the audio, and I'll get into it when I do the demo, and look at the time markers, and actually put time markers in. It gives you very accurate things and effects you can do with your beats. Transitions. This was a great way to generate effects on large numbers of RGB channels easily. Okay, 
won't say quickly, but easily. They can take some time to generate. RGB and matrix support. <sighs> great RGB support. Great matrix support. Doing stuff with the matrix can be a little bit time intensive. Can't it, Eddie? Building matrices by hand and effects can be a little bit time intensive, but it's got good support for it. Yes. I'm glad you added basic because we can blow the whole matrix support apart later on the demo. Broad support for controller hardware. We didn't look at, we didn't look at it with uh, Vixen and Law, and I'll just backtrack fractionally. It used to be in the case with LOR that you bought LOR hardware. That was it. These days it will work with other DMX hardware, courtesy of its DMX support. Vixen, Vixen has support for if it's been a Christmas-like controller sometime in the, in the past, it's got support for it. You got a what's called you know a Hill 320 or a, or a 595 or a Renard series, or you got some strange you know pa you know parallel port controlled box. Vixen will run it. There's no ifs or buts about it. Vixen will run it. Um, Lightshow Pro uh, has support for DMX hardware. Uh, Lightorama native um, out. Uh, Renard native out. Um, I said DMX E131 out. What else? Have I X X10 X10 if you if you're over in the US and you've got X10 product, uh, which is a uh, you know turn your turn your house lights on and off sort of stuff. Any kills? I think that's about it. That's about it. So it's got broad support, but certainly not as broad as Vixen. Vixen's sort of been like the the Swiss Army knife. If you've got it, it'll support it. And people have written plugins to support some really weird and wonderful things in Vixen. Yeah. Correct, correct. It hasn't had that broad community ability to write plugins. So, what's got the negatives? Stability and performance on high channel counts. If you're sequencing very high channel counts, it's been, 2.0 2 has been renowned for crashing. Okay, Dave's grinning, um, I'm grinning. Um, I've had a very famous rant uh, at the end of last year on the Lightshow Pro forums about its inability to actually be able to sequence and play back very high channel counts. But if you're using, and for the newbies here, you're using from zero to 5,000 channels in RGB, not a problem. It is the sequencer of choice. Cannot recommend it highly enough. Okay? Everyone may think I hate LSP, but I don't. I love it. Okay? You would agree with that assessment? Zero to five? Yep, three three years ago, okay, and it was didn't run your show then, didn't run my show, we both failed with it, but other people that had lesser shows ran it yeah. without problem. Had Eddie had success, so, and I wouldn't call Eddie's show necessarily lesser than mine in terms of its effects, but in terms of channel counts and other things it does, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, zero to five thousand channels in RGB. It is the sequence for a choice. I, I don't believe there's, there's really any other, certainly in the traditional space, there is no other choice. So if you're looking... I, I think you can pretty much sort of extend it to about 10,000 now. Last year, yeah, about 5,000. Yep. Hey, I can only base it on 2.0 that's out, yep. and that's all, that's all I'm saying. Until we've seen 2.5 out and tested in, in real life across a range of stuff, I'm not prepared to accept that extra to 10K. I think that's fair enough. So what the beta guys tell you outside of that, that's fine, but we need to get it really tested. Oh, well, I'm, my testing at the moment is around the 15,000 channel. Yeah. Uh, I actually have a set up online yep. that uses everything. Yeah. And at the moment, it's a heck of a lot better than 2.8. Well, i got to say, that's great news. That is great news. So very confusing to start with. No, yeah. Yeah, it's confusing. David from White Show Pro, and there's too many Davids in this in this community in this community overall. Because you say David, and you go which one? Um, David from White Show Pro has done eight or nine videos in a series, roughly. Um, if you're going to use Light Show Pro, go and find them, watch them from video one through to video nine or whatever it is. He looks at all the individual effects and things you can do in Light Show Pro. If you don't watch those videos, you will not get the best out of Lightshow Pro. You won't even scratch its surface. Okay? 
because the first time you use it, it is confusing. Uh, it, it's sort of like, whoa, what do I do here? So, uh, but once you get into it, uh, it becomes a little bit thing, a little bit, a um, little bit easier to use. Import conversions can be flaky. I don't think anybody's ever successfully imported a Vixen, Vixen file, even though it proclaims it can. Uh, they do have some success importing LLR files from memory uh, without any particular issues. So, but so if you've got other, if you've got previous work that you want to import, yeah, maybe, maybe not. But if you're new, then you're not going to have previous sequences, so it's it's not a concern. So. Let's have a bit of a look at LSP 2.2.0. Yeah, I just realised that after I did, I did, I, I did that when I was doing um, when I demoed. What's that going to start? Did that just start the sequencer? Yeah, all right. I did that when I demoed. Um, ah, it's going to start. Watch I did that when I um, demoed um, LS, uh, LOR down in um, Adelaide. Selected schedule instead of sequencer. So let us just. Let's try that again. That's confusing. <laughs> All right, sequencer. Come on, you can do it. As long as my laptop doesn't fall off here, we'll be right. All right, once again, we're presented with a wizard um, and various information. Um, I've left this tick. This is what you presented. If you leave it run at startup, this shows your recent sequence you've been working on. Quick way to get into previous things. Um, I'll just close that up. Uh, you do get tips and tricks. Uh, if you're new to it, well worth reading all the tips and tricks. Don't, don't get rid of them on the next, on the, on the next startup. Uh, you've got a list of controllers down this side that uh, are supported. You know, various DMX controllers, DIY. Oh, well, yeah, forgot about Lynx Pixel Net now. Um, animated lighting controllers. Uh, let me just get rid of that. It's annoying me. Um, virtual controllers. So there's a lot of different. I'd forgot about the animated lighting support. X10, wall based. Products, D light and Lightorama. Okay, so there's a lot of lot of support there. Um, new media sequence. What's going? We present it with a wizard. So, um, has anybody got? Is the stream still running? Just want to make sure. Are oh, you watching it? Okay, that's got to be a little bit. That's got to be a little bit confusing. <laughs> Okay. Um, can anyone, someone just log into chat on the forum and just let them know the stream's up? Excellent. I knew I'd forgotten to do something. So in here, you know, who's the author of the sequence? Various artists. Um, let's just look at um, Light Show Pro Music. I won't, I won't use that. Let's just pick up um, this one. Okay. You can load default controllers from other sequences um, and you can pick up a sequence there. We won't do that um, just for the issue here. Um, you can create default timings and you see here tenth, half, one looks a bit like lighter armor in this situation. Um, yeah, I really I really need the spotlight on me, mate. <laughs> Almost no one in chat's going, zoom closer, zoom closer. Anybody who's not aware of it, um, down in, when I was down in Adelaide, one of the guys in the US was going, move the webcam closer, move it closer, move it closer. And I think it eventually was looking straight up my nose. Um, so 
One of the things, if you're doing audio stuff, um, you can add default you can add default timings. But I actually like to add no intervals when I'm loading a audio sequence, so I can go and add them manually. Uh, we'll go next. You can have voiceovers, uh, and by voiceover, that's uh, you know start of the sh start of a sequence, a little voiceover track that says "Welcome to my light show. Enjoy the show. This one, this is the next track." Blah. Um, I don't use them. Um, you can actually go to Demented Elf and they'll make Voice professional voiceovers. Voice over with Light Show Pro are provided by me, the Demented Elf. If you want more information, contact me at the Demented Elf at charter.net. There you go. See? Okay. Um, you can set up, uh, bring in your own pictures of your house, etc. Put them in there. Um, performance wise, 320 by 200 or something is the. Yeah. Yeah, so not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you can, you know, make them really dark and, you know, etc. Make it, you know, daylight. Um, useful if you take a daylight picture and you, you want to make it night time. Um, I personally don't have any night time pictures in my house with no lights on it, so. All right. So, goes away and prepares the audio. Um, This is not a this is not a slow computer by any shape and means, but it's not the latest i7 either. So, okay, so our audio is prepared. It was preparing down the bottom. So first thing we're going to do is drag a controller here to begin. And this is where usually most people, when are new to the product, go, "What do I do here?" Uh, and you go over here, you expand it out. Let's pick a DMX one just to keep it simple for a minute. And you just drag it over there. Would you like to add it? Yes, I would like to add it. Then it takes you once again through some student, through some wizards. Start channel number, number one. How many channels do I have in this DMX controller? So you might not have 512 channels on that controller. It might be a 48 channel controller out there. And how are you sending it out? You're sending it out through DMX Pro um, and all the other choices there. And you can change these um, on the fly in the product. Um, after you've created them. So I'm going to bring that one in. So that was uh, straight. Uh, these are just going to control normal uh, LED, LED lights, not RGB stuff. So there's just 48 channels of control there. Let me just bring in, um, let's bring in something different, E131 controller. So this might be a, this might be a string of pixels. Um, start channel will be... Um, I know Eddie doesn't set these start channels, but I, I tend to set the channels on the fly as I come in. Um, so this is, uh, we're going to have, um, I'm going to make this a, instead of a light control, I'm going to make it an RGB light controller. Yeah, I, I do set the start channels, but I don't actually care about if they actually going to be in it. So okay. Still need to right. set the start, start channels. Yep. Okay. All right. So set the start channel. So. You can set the channel ordering up when you're working with RGB. Uh, this is important because not every product you buy out there is RGB in its wiring order or its control order. Pixels in general tend to be, the standard ones on strings tend to be RGB. But if you go and buy the flexible strip, it's GRB, green, red, blue in its ordering. So you got something like um, Vixen, uh, you've got to, you can manually set the ordering, but you've got to remember that the order is different. In here, you can actually say up front, well, this output will be RGB or BGR or, you know, Firefly stuff that uh, was released years ago. It went red, green, and blue, but in number orders. So let's just add that. Okay. Now, that's an RGB channel. You can see here it's grouped the channels in groups of three. Okay. Now, in terms of layers, we can add a new layer. Uh, we might add, let's call this one our um, mini trees. Um, mini trees. Um, so I've just got a layer there called mini trees. I'm going to create an RGB layer. And something magic's going to happen here in a second. I've got to create an RGB layer. It went and grabbed my RGB controller and stuck it in the RGB layer. So as soon as I tick the RGB layer to show display it, there's my RGB controller again but it disappeared out of the normal display. So that RGB control is now in that layer. Now my mini trees, let's have a look at my mini trees. 
Right, so channels 1 through to uh, 12. I've just got some basic you know, mono mini trees. Uh, yeah, I didn't want to do that. Can I highlight? Yes, I can. Been a little while since I used uh, that. So I've highlighted those 12 channels. Right click. That didn't highlight to keep the channels highlighted, Eddie. Can I do that? No, I can. Link. Link. Link to layer. So I can link that to my mini tree layers. Uh, selective linking. I'm just going to link that. See what happens. Yes. With a bit of luck, I select my mini trees. There's my 12 channels for my mini trees. So you see I can start to group things up and work on things in LSP um, much more easily. Okay, More time to configure. Um, I spoke earlier. I, I don't normally decide what I'm doing with my display until sometime in November. Uh, 2009, I think I was uh, sequencing uh, probably out around October. Knew what I was doing. 2010, I didn't actually start sequencing till November 29 and actually had no idea what my channel displays were looking like till that time. Last year when I had a break and come back, I actually went and bought, uh, bought the upgrade to Lightshow Pro. I started sequencing just at the end of October going into the early November. And the first thing I did in Lightshow Pro was actually go and define where all my channels were, what all my controllers were, and actually drew all the previews, something I've never ever done before. And I actually knew where everything was, and I laid all this out in Lightshow Pro. Uh, all the layers grouped everything, and it was a really, really effective tool in being able to sequence the display. Just because Lightshow Pro didn't run my display, that's a different matter. So, so I've got some stuff here. Um, now, I, I talked briefly around, um, if I go to effects, and I turn on touch mode. just dragging my mouse out there and find a point. Now if I do it down here, I don't have to click and hold anything, I can just drag. I go, whoa, I want a timing mark there, or that's my audio starts there, so timing mark. So there's another one out there. So you can start to see how I'm hearing what the music is doing and I'm starting to put in timings. Yep. Yep. So until I've got the uh, Lotcho Pro experts in the room. So I just I just plucked in some bits out here. Can I zoom my timeline? Yeah, up the top there, plus or minus. Yeah. Plus or minus there. Zoom out. Okay. I just wanted to get a bit more time in. See, you see, I'm just. That's that's putting timing marks on every layer, okay. But you can also put in coloured timing marks, which you can then select and deselect, okay. So I think there's eight, eight, eight colours, eight colours. There, that one. Yep. Okay, so you can have shared, and then individual coloured timing marks, which you can select and deselect. Okay, does that make sense? Yep. Okay. So at the moment, I'm just putting in shared ones across all layers. So if I go back to the, if I bring in the RGB layer, you can see there the timing marks go across all of them. Okay. So you might work your way across a, a display like that, and um, yeah, put in a range of generic timing marks then go back and do just beats and stuff like that okay so very very powerful little feature so I've got some timing marks in there I'm not, I'm not going to get too in depth um, with it so now I want to say I want to ramp on and I'm just going to close these up for a second 
So select my mini trees for a second and say over these two timing marks I want to ramp it on. And you'll see it will also play back the tune for what I just did. So you can actually got a, you've actually got a, a double check that goes, well, oh yeah, that ramp on will work over that time. Okay. Um, now, if I do that on an RGB layer, okay, let's just say we want to, it'll then pop a dialog box up and say, what, what colours do I want to use? What ramps? Um, and if I click over there, I can then say, well, I want it to be you know, a nice yellow at the other end. We'll start with blue. Yeah. Now, ramp on across colours doesn't necessarily work, but if I make that an on, it doesn't work as well as it probably should anyway. Okay. You see that in that time period, and I'll expand that controller out. That has just set that up to be blue to yellow in that timing sequence across all those channels without me having to select and utilise every channel. Okay, so this is where it's a cross between the, the quite traditional sequences we've seen with Vixen and, and um, LS, uh, LOR and moving into a, a more of an object based world dealing with groups of channels. So transitions, uh, as I said, I'm going to keep <coughs> this um, as short as possible. Transitions work on layers and I just select and you can hear I'm still scrubbing across my audio track there so I, as I select it I know exactly where my transition is going to be applied okay and we won't say we'll, we'll put up some stage lights here across here that's what it's that's the preview of it uh, the number of now I believe this has changed in 2.5 this is now frames per second okay highly confusing okay <laughs> The number of frames, just if, if you build a large number of frames, it'll have a very fine um, progressive effect. If you have a short number of frames, it'll be very steppy over the time period. I was coming back to that. I was coming back to that. You will have noticed that I didn't get an ink drawing in there. Nothing happened. This is one of those little nice gotchas with Lightshow Pro. If you don't have stuff in your preview, and this is why I actually ended up drawing everything in my preview, if you don't have stuff drawing your preview, you won't get transitions to work. So, if we go in and um, draw controller channel images, and I'm going to cheat. What do I have? Um, how many how many channels do I have in that controller? Yeah, 48. So 15. 15 uh, yeah, it's all right. Let's just let's just draw an arch for a second. Um, arch. Yeah. It's not really across where I want it to be. Uh, I'm going to split it across um, this guy out to the end. I did have 512 channels in there. Um, there's my arch redrawn. Okay, and you still got the preview down the bottom left-hand side. Let's go and edit that transition. I just double-clicked on it, and we'll map it to the object. You can map to a stage, so if you draw, if you have a whole set of arches and the front of a house is RGB, you can set it right across the entire house, uh, or you can map it down to one particular object you're working on, the entire effect. So with a bit of luck, yep, there it goes, it's building, it's doing its work. If you have lots and lots of channels and um, a very complex uh, transition. Go away and make yourself a cup of coffee and come back. Hopefully 2.5 is a lot better. Yeah. That didn't work, Eddie. It's obviously, it's obviously not 100% right in, in terms of what I drew on the preview. You can notice the preview though, it's only got some channels. Yeah, that's what I've noticed, every second yeah. channel is um, so I don't know what you've done there. Okay, let's, let's just go back again when it generates that effect. Um, 
this is just one of those little bugs, everybody, that you get occasionally. Clear all channel images, yeah. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Thank you. Maybe that's where it went wrong. I'm just going to I'm just going to cheat. I'm going to include all channels. I don't think that will impact it. Um, single pixel, go OK. All right. So there's my arch. Go OK. All right. Double click. And again, it's only done for correct Yeah. Don't know. Um, I'll crack, out, I'll crack open another file in a minute and I know he's configured. Yeah, oh, there it is. It's drawn. Okay. I'm not even going to dive into it. It'll, it'll be just something I've done quickly through there. So um, trust us, it does work. Okay. If I play that back with a bit of luck, there it is. Okay. All right. No, it probably wasn't because let me let me choose a different transition. That one works really well on a mega tree and stuff like that. Let me just choose something that's something to, um, to be aware of. Vertigo. Some of those are like a letterbox type video. Windows ribbons works really well. Yeah. Don't ask me why it's only drawing every second. This will be some weird thing that I've configured not right on the way in. Maybe. So there you go. You can see it displaying that transition without any issue. Now that's a, that's a really quick way to get some very complex effects across a whole range of RGB channels. Okay. So, so basic, that's the basics on Light Show Pro. Quick questions. All right. That, that, that is a good question. Um, can we, can, can we, can we have the non-sale prices first? Okay. Look, standard one universe basic pack. Standard one unit, one universe. One twenty-nine for a standard one universe. Universe is okay. Dmx, Dmx talks in universes. A universe is 512 channels of control. So I can have one 512 channel. Yes. Yes. Okay. Remember if you're talking RGB, you're talking three. Yes. Divide by three once you get into RGB. 170 pixels or 170 standard yeah. items. Yeah. So when you're in RGB pixel space, you'll consume universes like they go out of style. The next one up is 16 universes. Yeah, 8,192 channels. Yeah, that's Hello. it. Taken. <laughs> uh, standard price is two ninety nine. Um, current sale price is two forty nine. The pro version, which is what uh, I've got, Eddie's got, and a few other mad people with lots of channels have got. Phil's got. Um, is four hundred and forty nine dollars, um, and that's thirty two thousand channels. Sale um, price three ninety nine. Three ninety nine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Occasionally it goes back to that, but it doesn't seem to be very long. He did have a half story. He did have a half price yeah. the other day. He did, so yeah. You basically pay the difference in the cost. Yeah. So you can so. start off with the basic, see if you like it, it's 99 bucks. If you want to go up to the next one, um, you simply pay the difference that you would have paid in the first place. Yeah. So, um, if you once again, you're starting with a small show. You, you, you're starting off, starting off small, and you got, yeah, 16 channels, 32 channels, 100 channels. Um, you can start with single universe copy, um, and it'll get you started. You move into the yeah, RGB pixel space, and you need to upgrade. You just essentially, it's pay the difference. Law, 
so using the actual law software has then transitioned across to LSP? Eddie, Eddie, Eddie's one. Yeah. What, was the channel, so, what so was the channel count before you, and what was the reasons why you decided to move across? Okay, well I started off with, um, my first year was 64 channels for LLAC controls, and basically my first year was, I just had a lot of black light mojis and things like that, and that's where I got the bug. Um, I realised that my, I just didn't like great lights and things like that, the 240 volt, that's where I said come across the deal, and that's when we, the forum got started, mm. And then that's why I went over to RGB at DC. And um, when I looked at it, especially back then, there was no other tool out there that could actually sequence RGB the way that LSP could. Um, two years ago, it was miles ahead of virtually everything else as far as RGB lighting. So it was a real simple choice for me. The other thing too is um, LSP has a matrix feature which allows me to draw animation. There's, no really, there's not really anything out there that actually allows me to draw animation. Uh, that's another tool I've, I've used. Um, and they're the main reasons I've done it, just the RGB, just mainly the RGB and um, the fact that um, it, it works with my matrix and allows me to do my um, animations and create my own animations without just using a video overlay or something like that. See, I, I, the, a lot of guys in the US have also transitioned from LR to LSP and nearly the, the primary reason I see across all the forums is they're going RGB. It's not necessarily about channel count. They're going RGB. That's the big thing because it makes RGB so much easier, as, as you can see there. You still use your more I've actually got to sit up over there that I can show people later. It's actually got um, three CCR controllers that are hooked into PMX, running through LSP, and actually don't even run the CCR strips. They're running 6803 module modules for my candy case and things like that. So the LOR gear is actually great for stuff.